Transcription, you hear it from everyone. It's arguably the most important process in learning the jazz language. Some people, if their ears aren't fully developed yet, will learn a transcription through reading it. Some people learn a solo purely by ear through the recording. The goal at the end of the day is to have the solo fully internalized and memorized. But did you know that once you've learned and internalized a transcription, it opens the doors to so many new possibilities of getting that material within your own improvisation. I'm gonna share with you a five step process that will maximize the benefits you get from the transcription. We're constantly working on all these approaches through our various membership programs here at Jazz Lesson Videos. My personal favorite at the moment is our Jazz Gym program where we are constantly studying various transcriptions of solos from the greatest jazz musicians of all time. Seven days a week, either me, Ryan Devlin, Cecil Alexander, or Chad LB host multiple guided group practice sessions. Every session has three separate clear objectives that the coach fully breaks down in three different levels. Level green, blue, and red. Then we set on a 15 minute timer and all practice it together. Any of the participants can ask questions or provide commentary at any point of the session and the environment is extremely positive and uplifting. A lot of pretty unique friendships from all over the world are made along the way. Each Jazz Gym week has a new theme such as Charlie Parker week, Dexter Gordon week, Melodic Sales week, etc. We're actually launching a brand new theme this coming week, the John Coltrane week, in which we'll study various techniques, language, and solos of John Coltrane and all practice the objectives together. In celebration of this new themed week, we've decided to also launch a free one week trial of the Jazz Gym so that any of you can join us and see if the Jazz Gym is for you. If you're interested, you can find the link to all those details in the description below. So let's get into the first tip. If you haven't already, write out the entire solo onto sheet music. Here's the sheet music of a transcription I did not long ago of a Kenny Garrett solo over his composition, Song Number no. 8. Having a visual representation can make diving into the theory of it all a lot easier. The next step is to look through the entire solo and identify all the lines that really speak to you. I personally like to physically mark them all with a highlighter or a pencil. There's one. I really like that one. plays this C minor 7 line. He uses the major 7 and then highlights the flat 6 in the minor 7 chord. I don't hear that very often. Super unique sound. This one seems like a bread and butter 2-5 that I should really have under my fingers in all 12 keys. This 2-5 smacks pretty hard. Alrighty, so I marked them all, and it looks like I ended up with five licks. I genuinely would be very happy if it showed up into my own playing. I love the entire solo, but the ones that really speak to me are those five. Now, most of the time, you won't even know why these lines speak to you, but figuring out why is the first step into recreating that energy into your own improvised lines. All right, so step three is to break down each of those lines and understand them inside and out. Let's take one of those lines that I marked earlier and fully analyze it together. Okay, so just looking at the sheet here, I can see that the first four notes are sort of an embellishment over the root of this chord. G. And then we're going to walk our way down and do a sort of embellishment around the six. This sort of embellishment pattern is very common. So the target note is that six, that E, but you're going to first play a diatonic note above, and then you're going to play the target note, and then you're gonna play a chromatic tone from below, and then return back to the target. So you end up playing that target note twice. You can actually do this to the whole scale, Now over this G sharp over F, which is really just another way to say a G major seven, we're sticking to this chord. The first four notes is the shape of the four chord, the C major seven, starting on G and descending our way down. And then we get into an A sharp. So this is pretty interesting. So these last four notes is actually a pretty common shape as well. Kenny Garrett actually plays a B. 
And I wonder if this was some sort of muscle memory, not enough time to think, just, just go, just go. But I think what was really implied here is actually this sound. And so what that is, is actually a common tone diminished chord. What that means is when you have a diminished chord that shares at least one note in common with a different chord. So in this case, when the key of a G major seven, and that sound is actually the sound of a G diminished sound. Now a G is not in there, but compared to a G diminished scale, what you have is the flat third, the flat five, the major seven, and then the major six, AKA the double flatted seventh that some people like to think of it for the diminished chord there. This is also a nice diatonic note to voice lead back to the fifth of the next chord. So you can really see this measure as a substitution. You have a four chord and then a one diminished to one starting on the next measure there. A common tone diminished is a very special sound to just decorate the sound of your one chord. It's a nice way to sort of delay a resolution, if you will, and add an extra color in there. Anyway, we return to our one chord, but it's over F. So really, this is just an inversion of your one dominant seven, your G7 chord. But if you look inside, it looks like he's actually playing the next chord and just implying this over both of those chords. And those notes right there, we're starting on the flat nine of this E7 chord, and we play a chromatic enclosure around the root, and then we chromatically walk our way down for the rest of the measure. When we get to the A7, we walk upwards to the third of this chord, and we just ascend the triad, but adding the ninth in there too. And we go down it as well. So really cool, even though the chords is a G, a G over F sharp, a G over F, it's helpful to analyze it through the implied substitutions. So I sort of see this as a G6, and then a C major seven, and then a one diminished seven into two bars of E7. Now there's potentially other ways to analyze this, but that is how I'm seeing this. So this is pretty cool. Now I just learned that I can imply the sound of four major seven to one diminished seven to one. This might be helpful if I really want to bring out some new colors within like a one chord vamp. Say I'm like stuck on a major seven chord for a while. I know that at some point in my one chord vamp, I'll be able to. Cool, so that's a new little weapon from my toolkit that I can now extract and take from Kenny Garrett. I can create my own lines within that substitution as well, so. Ah, thank you, Kenny Garrett. I'm adding that to my toolkit forever. Okay, so let's get into step four. Step four would be to transpose your favorite lines that you've analyzed through all 12 keys. Et cetera, et cetera. This is undoubtedly one of the best methods of practicing in general for many reasons. One, it pushes you to learn new technique in your fingers to really learn it in those new keys. Two, transposing can be very brain intensive, like a great gym workout that increases your overall musicianship. Three, if you can't hear it yet in the new key, it's gonna force you to really apply your theory knowledge, which improves your overall understanding of music. And four, essentially you learn that line 12 times. So by the end of the process, it's really in your ear and it'll probably show up in your own improvisation soon. Every day we're constantly transposing things in new keys through the jazz gym and we're all getting better at it together. Again, if you'd like to join us in the jazz gym, you can find the link to sign up in the description below. The final tip I'll share with you is to reconstruct the lines and create new lines out of it. There are many fun ways to do this, but I'll show you one that was inspired by the masterclass given by Alex Hahn. 
through our mentorship series, a program ran by Jazz Lesson Videos where we host a pro jazz musician every Sunday to give a live masterclass for every member who is enrolled. Alex Hahn talked about his transcription process and during it he mentioned how he reconstructs his favorite lines. I'm gonna attempt to do it here with this line from the Kenny Garrett song number eight solo and walk you through exactly how I'm going to do this. Okay, so here is that lick number five that I identified from earlier. The first step is to ask ourselves, why does this line work? And then we're going to recreate it starting from a different point in the scale. So the first thing I'm noticing is that this line is going up diatonic thirds. And on the final one here, it uses a triplet chromatic embellishment to get to the last third. So I'm gonna start on a different chord tone and try to recreate that. So how about we start on the third? So now we have. Okay, so looking after that, I really enjoy that this line descends down chromatically. So I wanna retain that. I'm going to descend down chromatically. Now, what does this line do? Really what's happening is it uses a chromatic passing tone within the sound of C minor six. It also adds a nine in there. The C minor six is part of this B altered sound that he's implying in this chord. So we have a C minor six add a nine and add a chromatic passing tone between the five and the six. I'm starting on the nine of the B mixolydian and then I'm going to chromatically walk into the sound of altered. Okay, so now I'm on a B, which is still part of the B mixolydian sound. But from here on, I want to stick strictly to the sound of altered. So now I'm really thinking in the sound of C melodic minor. So the original line skips down a diatonic note within this melodic minor and then just walks down scale steps. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Awesome. So the original line plays a third and then does an enclosure around the root. So because we started this entire line up a third, I'm going to embellish the note a third above that the original E major seven chord did. So it does a note below, a note above, and then your target note. It looks like the next part plays the chromatic approach tone from below, or you can think of it as a diatonic approach tone from below, and then it hits that target once again. I'm just gonna try to be hip. I'm gonna make this a chromatic this time, just for some variety there. Okay, so from here, it walks up the chord in thirds. So I'm gonna copy that. So these last four notes looks to be exactly the same as these four notes, but upside down. So I'm going to look at these four notes and sort of do it upside down again. Awesome. So we have a line. Okay, so let's play through the original line first. All right, so let's hear the new line now. Ooh. Let's do it again. Ooh. It's different for sure. It sort of sounds like there's some new colors in there, but it's made of the exact same skeleton as the first one. And that skeleton was purely what I noticed and liked about the line in the first place. So naturally the new line, I really enjoy it too. Wow, that was awesome. You can do this whole process again, starting on the fifth, starting on the seventh, starting on whatever note. The possibilities are endless. You're gonna have so many brand new lines that's never even been played before, all based on a line from a master. Alrighty, well, happy transcribing everyone. Again, we just launched the new John Coltrane Week at the Jazz Gym, where we'll be going over several Coltrane transcriptions and soloing techniques. It starts this coming Monday, and a free trial is available for those who are curious and wanna give the Jazz Gym a test run before subscribing. The link to sign up can be found in the description below. As always, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe below and comment what else you would like to see from us in the future. Thank you everyone, I'll see you next time.